Hey everybody, this is Carrie Wilmot. I am here with the Understood team and thank you so much for joining us today with this Facebook Live. Um, today we're going to be talking about ADHD, anger, and troubling emotions. So we're so glad that you're here to join us. I know uh, you guys often have lots of questions around this topic. You know, it relates to parents of um, kids that have learning and thinking differences and maybe some of you here today are also adults um, who might be struggling with some of these same um, difficulty. So we're going to try to talk through a lot of this information. And so um, thank you everybody for joining. I'm going to tell you just a little bit real quick about myself while we get a few more people on here. Um, I am a pediatric occupational therapist and I have been an OT for 24 years. I'm an expert here with the um, understood team. I authored a book, Wired Differently, A Teacher's Guide to Sensory Processing Challenges to help teachers um, and even parents sort of navigate that tricky space of kids in the early childhood environment with self-regulation. I'm also the mom of a child who is 13 and has ADHD, uh, but one of my most recent um, activities that I'm so excited about here with Understood is that I am a group host in the Wonder app for the Movement and Sensory Challenges group. So if you haven't downloaded the app yet, it's W-U-N-D-E-R. Feel free to go ahead and check that out. You know, I think it's important to know that whether you're a child or whether you're an adult, you know, everybody has emotions, right? And so it's not, it's totally okay to feel those emotions. Um, but we know that kids and adults with learning and thinking differences and ADHD often tend to have more intense emotions. And so I think that's the struggle sometimes is trying to figure out how do we manage these intense emotions. Um, you know, and so for kids, a lot of those emotions can come from, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're different ages, maybe they're experiencing something different in their life. Um, and so they have different emotions at different ages. But the part that's hard is they don't really always understand the words or those exact emotions and what they are. So they often just react or they get frustrated um, or they have like meltdowns. And so, you know, and if you're a parent and you're home this summer, you might be struggling with some of this too, right? The lack of routine, extra downtime, more screen time, that can sometimes make it harder to have transitions. And those situations can also lead to, you know, intense reactions as well. And then, you know, where I live in the United States, school is like two or three weeks away. And so before we know it, here we are back in the homework realm, right? Where after school, kids are going to be asked after a really long day to do really challenging things. And, you know, with executive functioning difficulties, when you're asked to answer or complete like really multi-step um, activities, especially homework, that can lead to a lot of frustration for kids too. So the, you know, the the emotions that we're seeing with kids are outbursts, frustration, anxiety, an intense need to get what they want, being really quick to anger. Um, but for adults, you know, I think the cool part with adults is that kids also feel the same emotions. But if if you're an adult, you've matured, right? You understand what the emotions are. You might be able to be more you know, articulate with how you explain like what's actually going on in your brain or what it feels like. And, and for many adults, they say that they get really frustrated because their brain moves so quickly that their actions can't keep up with how quickly they have these amazing thoughts. And that a lot can lead, you know, to some like analysis paralysis, like you have all these great ideas, but you're, you're not exactly sure, like, which one do I start with? And then before you realize it, you know, you've spent all this time thinking about all these great you know, solutions and yet you, you haven't started yet. And now the deadline is here and you were supposed to submit something. And so now you have anxiety over what's going to happen because I didn't submit it. And you might be feeling some frustration and anger too. And, and whether you're a child or an adult, I think, you know, it's important to say that all these emotions can really, you know, impact somebody, anybody's self-esteem and confidence, right? You know, so, one of the things you know that a lot of parents ask are um, what can I do to help prevent these emotions from my child or myself and you know we can't you know prevent them altogether right life is full of emotions you know but certainly 
you know, what I often suggest to the clients that I work with is to try to prepare knowing that emotions are coming. So especially for kids, you know, when they're not in the heat of the moment, you want to prepare and plan ahead, right? So, you know, teach them about things like personal, how to take space, how to, you know, be by yourself for a couple of minutes so that you can um, relax and, and regroup. You know, maybe you work on developing some mindset techniques or learning how to take like really deep breaths or have a sip of water and, and really finding some really positive coping um, strategies that can help just sort of, you know, help you cope in that or help kids cope in that moment. Um, and, you know, if you need to, you know, it's really important, I think, you know, to also consider reaching out to a counselor. There are some really great counselors out there that are, you know, able to help kind of employ those strategies as well, whether it be for you, for your child, for your family, you know, it's set, certainly something that you definitely want to look into if that's an option for you, just to get another perspective to right? We're all, you know, dealing with all these kinds of emotions and, and nobody here is alone. I can guarantee you that we are all experiencing the same things. And so it's important, you know, to find your people and to help you in those situations. Um, you know, and another thing that parents often ask are, okay, what do I do in the heat of the moment? It is like, it's, they're in a meltdown or tantrum or a struggle, or there's a transition and I don't know what to do because, you know, they're, they're really struggling and, you know, how do I get them out of it? Right. And so, you know, in that situation, it's so hard, right? We want to jump in. We have all these amazing things to say. We have, we think, I mean, I know at least for, you know, a lot of the kids that I work with and even for my own son, right? Sometimes, you know, you as the adult and, and you know, who knows the child well, you kind of know what the strategies are that will help them, but they don't want to hear it, right? Because they're just in this state. Um, but sometimes just being simple and labeling that emotion and saying, I know you're mad. We couldn't, we had to leave the store. I know you're frustrated. We had to turn off your device. I know you're angry. You really wanted to go to the movies today, you know? So just kind of validating their feelings and letting them know that you understand kind of where they're at um, and that, you know, so when they're ready, that they know that you're kind of on their side. Um, you know, the other thing you can do is just encourage, you know, you know, maybe take a deep breath. How about you have a sip of water? Um, you know, really trying to help kind of cue them and like to employ those positive coping strategies that you've already talked about, right? Um, and, you know, and one thing, whether, you know, if it's a child, a lot of times with kids, I'll suggest to parents, create a visual, like maybe like a one sheet that has pictures of some of the things that you know help them specifically and just have it available because it's really hard in the moment to like, you know, always think like, oh, I know exactly in order to make myself feel more regulated, I need to go take a drink of water. You know, when you're when you're feeling those intense emotions, it's hard to sort through all that. But if you know that, hey, I have a sheet of paper or I have a picture of the five things that really help me and I just need to find that paper, then that's going to kind of jog their memory so that they can just, even if they can't tell you, they can point and they can pick something that will help them uh, with that their coping mechanisms. And, you know, and if you're an adult, maybe you don't need a visual chart, but you can certainly set up a file in your, um, in your phone, right? Access that file of the five things that kind of remind you what helps you in that situation when you're feeling some of that, you know, intense anxiety and, um, you know, and what you can do kind of in that situation. So, at this point, I can see um, there's some questions in here that people have been asking, and we are gonna take some questions from the community. Okay, so the first question is, my son always says he's always mad and he doesn't know why. Sometimes he gets irritated very easily and he often gets very angry and it turns extreme. You know, again, I think it is, it's hard, right? Lots of kids, they can't always make that connection. They're just so in the moment of feeling that intense anger that they they sort of lose track of maybe what caused it. And and a lot of times I find, you know, 
the moment that causes the reaction is really a piece of kind of what was sort of transpiring maybe like hours or even sometimes days before, right? Like we can have this like almost triggering reaction, but if you kind of like look back and you think like, oh, well maybe um, there were other parts of the day that kind of got them sort of like irritated or having difficulty with their self-regulation over time. And that was just sort of that precipitating event that sort of caused that um, reaction. And so, you know, I think, again, when you're not in the moment, really having those conversations with kids, if they can tell you about, you know, hey, what are the kinds of things that do make you angry? Um, what, you know, so that you're really having that open conversation um, when they're able to process it and, and to make some of those connections. Or, and if they can't, that's where you can step in. If, if you've noticed, I think it makes you angry when, is that the case? You know, when something something happens so that they can, you know, really try to make those connections. And maybe they say no, but at least it opens the door for communication and it allows you to have further conversations down the road. I love um, having conversations and I tell parents all the time, have conversations with your kids in the car. You know, if you're driving somewhere, if you're, you know, if they're in the back seat, um, you know, really that's a, it's a great time to have a conversation um, because, you know, you're both in the car going someplace, maybe you're going someplace fun and, you know, it kind of allows them sometimes to sort of, you know, focus in on that specific question. Um, okay. And so we have another question here. How do you deal with when they start yelling? My son can't control his voice level and it just goes to screaming. That That's part of self-regulation, right? It goes from, you know, kind of like zero to a hundred where um, kids are, um, you know, not able to just regulate. So if you, if you kind of Google, um, or maybe I think we actually might have one, I'm not sure if we have one on the understood site. Um, they make like voice modulation charts. So you can actually teach kids about the different kinds of voice. So whether you have, um, no voice because you're you're not talking you have a quiet voice you have an indoor voice you have an outdoor voice you have a playground voice you know a lot of times again it's education around you know letting them know oh hey you went from you know quiet voice to playground voice you know can we you know take it take it down a notch you know so they they can look at these charts and they can see that they have control um over you know, over how loud they are because they don't, they truthfully, most, most kids, they don't realize it. If they're really excited, they really jump, um, into, into that next realm and, and they skip, <laughs> they skip a few, but they're not aware often, um, of how loud, um, and what do I think about routines? You know, routines, routines are so important. Um, you know, even, you know, kids really thrive on routines and, and, and routines within routines, right? You know, keeping, you know, your morning routine similar, like your, you know, what they do in the bathroom, like, let's, let's, you know, take a shower, let's, uh, you know, brush our teeth, let's, you know, um, get dressed or whatever you do in that particular order. And we have lots of routine charts, um, I know for sure on the Understood website as well, that you can kind of use for visuals, post those in the bathroom. But kids really, really thrive on the routine. When they're off their routine, that's when I find they have a really hard time, like knowing what to do in that situation. And so they often want to, you know, um, revert, they need to revert back to those routines so that they can kind of move on to the next step. Otherwise, um, it becomes really difficult and you're prone in those situations for them to get, you know, like maybe, you know, they've been watching TV or they've, you know, focused on that for a really hard time, a long time, then it's hard for them to kind of transition away from those activities they really enjoy to get to something else that's next. Um, okay, so I thank you all so much for coming and joining with us. Um, I really appreciate um, being able to have this conversation with you. And if you've enjoyed this topic and these co this conversation that we've had today, please, um, I encourage you to join the Wonder app. It's Again, it's W-U-N-D-E-R. There's hosts like myself that offer um, different um, types of articles and information, and you can get your questions in different groups answered um, by experts like myself um, at the app. So we appreciate you, and you have a great day.